Jeff Bezos, who is worth $59.2 billion, is apparently getting some return on his investment. The billionaires in this country are scared to death of Bernie Sanders. Let's just say it out loud. They are friggin' scared to death. The Coke, the Coke network is planning on spending almost a billion dollars. And if Bernie is the nominee, they will be enthusiastically and aggressively spending that. And over at the Washington Post, Jeff Bezos' newest acquisition, his uh, editorial board, which answers to the guy worth almost $60 billion, one of the richest men in the world, wrote a, an op-ed that is filled with distortions, half-truths, and outright lies, in my opinion. They said, for example, Senator Bernie Sanders, this is how it opens. It's by the editorial board. This is the official editorial of the Washington Post. Senator Bernie Sanders is leading in New Hampshire and within striking distance in Iowa, in large part because he's playing the role of uncorrupted anti-establishment crusader. But Mr. Sanders is not a brave truth teller. He is a politician selling his own brand of fiction to a slice of the country that eagerly wants to buy it. Fiction? What Bernie Sanders is selling is what FDR did. It is what Harry Truman continued. It's what Dwight Eisenhower continued. It's what John Kennedy continued. It's what, it's what Lyndon Johnson expanded on. And it's what Richard Nixon continued. When Nixon left office, when Jerry Ford, it's what Jerry Ford continued. I mean, when Nixon left office, the, the top tax rate was 74% for people like Jeff Bezos. And it was one of the reasons why people like Jeff Bezos were only worth two or three billion and rather than 59 billion and weren't, you know, able thus to basically buy the media. So fiction? No, I'm sorry. It's this is not fiction. What Bernie is saying is we don't need to, we, you know, we don't need to look to Scandinavia to do this. We have done most of these things already in the United States. And we have even done single-payer health care in the United States and done it very successfully. It's called Medicare. And it runs on 3% overhead. And this is where the lies just explode my head. Uh, it continues, Mr. Sanders' story continues with fantastical claims about he would, how he would make the European social model work in the United States. No, he's talking about taking the American social model, Medicare, and making it available to everybody. This, by the way, is something that President Obama talked about in 2007 and 2008 when he was running for president. Back to the editorial. Sanders admits that he would have to raise taxes on the middle class in order to pay for his universal Medicare for all health care plan. And he proposes massive savings in health care costs that would translate into generous benefits for ordinary people, putting them well ahead on net. So far, so good, right? I mean, that part is true. And we know that, you know, for example, over United Healthcare, the largest of the health insurance companies, Stephen J. Hemsley has taken over a billion dollars, a thousand million dollars in compensation from that company. He has over a hundred executives who make over a million dollars a year. They pay generous dividends to their stockholders. This is where the money's going. And this, by the way, is how Jeff Bezos makes his money, by and large. Most billionaires don't make their money as pay. They make their money through stock dividends. And, and through forms of, of compensation that are taxed at much lower rates than you and I pay. And I, I, you know, I don't have the details on Jeff Bezos, but I would be willing to bet just about anything that that's the case. And that's why I find it really interesting that the rest of this paragraph never mentions that there are tens of thousands of people in the health insurance business whose only job is to say no to your claims. They spend all their time looking through the claims. There's Hundreds of thousands of people working in doctor's offices and hospitals across the country handling claims. For example, at, uh, at uh, Mount Sinai in New York, you've got an entire floor of that hospital. An entire floor. Hundreds of employees dedicated to processing claims and fighting with insurance companies. Meanwhile, in Montreal, where they have single-payer health care, there's a hospital that is virtually identical. Same number of beds. They have one room dedicated to processing claims with three employees and one desk. That's the kind of overhead that goes away with a single-payer health care system. Now, do you hear that in this dishonest Washington Post editorial? Let me again read this to you, and I'll finish with this paragraph. Mr. Sanders' story continues with fantastical claims. He admits that he would have to raise taxes on the middle class in order to pay for his universal Medicare for all health care plan, and he promises massive savings on health care costs that would translate into generous benefits for ordinary people putting them well ahead on net. 
but he does not adequately explain where those massive savings would come from. I'm sorry, that's, that's a flat-out lie. And then they go on to say, getting rid of corporate advertising and overhead would only yield so much. Yeah, it would yield about 20%. Well, actually, it would probably yield about 15%. Who, know, who knows? But it's good. I mean, just getting rid of the whole for-profit structure is going to yield a hell of a lot. Savings would also have to come from slashing payments to doctors and hospitals and denying benefits that people want. Right. He would be a braver truth teller if he explained that how he would go about rationing health care like European countries do. Wait a minute, United Healthcare doesn't ration health care? Are you serious? I'm just astonished by this. To watch more clips from our programs, hit the watch more videos button over here. And please be sure to hit the handy dandy subscribe button so you'll always be up to date. Tag you're it.